Hi guys. Um, I know that you guys probably at this point think that I am beating a dead horse with the data, but the data and the graphing and the charts and the way that we look at the data that comes at us um, through advertisements and the media, it's really important and it's not something that you get to spend a lot of time on um, when you're in school with us. So this is a really great chance for us to take a bigger look at that. And with that said, being able to use our technology is really important. Um, we have these great resources like Google Docs and Google Sheets. Um, and if you don't know how to use them, then it doesn't do you any good to have access to them. So for this assignment, part five is to create an advertisement. And I really don't care that much about the advertisement. What I care about is the graph. Your assignment is to create a misleading graph for the data that they give you in the very last slide. Um, and so you can do that by hand. You can sketch one out on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. Um, but by sketching it out on a piece of paper, you can actually manipulate the data a little easier because Google Sheets doesn't want you to manipulate data. They want you to put it in and display it in a way that makes sense. If you were to do it out on a piece of paper, you might be able to manipulate things like the distance between the scale on the x-axis. So maybe from 0 to 1 is really big, and then 1 to 2 is really small. You saw an example of that in the video. Um, so, But you can't do it quite that way in Google Sheets. However, there are ways that you can make a misleading graph in Google Sheets, and I just want to show you how to make a graph at all. Um, some of you might have done this with Miss Woodman already, which is great, so this will be a refresher. Um, so the first thing you do is open up a new spreadsheet. So I sent my marketing department out to do some research for me, because I sell garbage, okay? But I need to know what type of garbage do my consumers want. What do they like? So I sent my marketing team out to check on what kind of garbage people like. I have garbage type A, B, and C. So my, my marketing department came back and told me what percent of my consumers, okay, now look, this doesn't really fit very well in here. If I was gonna show this, I might stretch out these columns. You know, not such a bad deal. Um, and they came back and told me that 33% like A, 32% like B, and 35% like C. So in this case, my percentage adds up to 100%. That means of the types of garbage I offer, all of my consumers like one kind or another. Okay, so that's good. Now, if you have put in these headings, then Google Sheets will import that as the labels of your axes. So watch this. I'm going to highlight all of my data. So I think when you do it from your assignment, there's actually five, four or five data points. Um, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say insert. And I'm going to come down here and I want to insert a chart. Okay. So it's going to think for a second. It's going to pop up. It's taking the data you gave it. And at some point, it'll pop up a chart. Let's try that again. Insert chart. There we go. Okay, so this one auto-populated, if you look over here under chart type, it auto-populated a pie chart. Now, if I wanted to show this data in a way that made sense and looked accurate, this pie chart would be a really good way to go because... If you look, 32, 33, and 35% are all fairly close together. That would tell me as a business owner that maybe people don't care which type of garbage they buy. They just like it all, evenly. But I want to show that people prefer type C. So this pie chart isn't really doing it for me. So I want to come over here and I'm going to pick either a column or a bar chart. In this case, it doesn't really matter which one we pick because the column chart is gonna put our type of garbage as our x-axis and our percents on the y, where the bar chart is gonna do the opposite. 
you could show this data either way. Whatever you decide is fine. Either of these graphs will do the job. So I like the column chart, so I'm going to leave it like this. So Google Sheets auto populates something that makes sense for the data you put in. But this makes it look like it's really even, and that's not what I want to show. So maybe I'm going to come down here and if I go to customize over right here, I can change all these different things. I can change the colors. I can change how it looks. You can come in here and play with that. If you wanted to change the title of the graph up here, you could do that here. Um, you can change the fonts, all the text options. Um, that part we don't really care. If you needed a legend, you don't really need one in this project, but sometimes you might. Um, but what, what I really want to look at down here is because my percents are on the vertical axis, I want to come down here to vertical axis. And right here, we can play with the values. So right now, my axis is starting at zero, which I believe is one of the things that they talk about in the video that really your data should always start at a time of zero or a beginning point of zero. Anytime you don't is when you start messing with scale. So, but look here, my minimum value on here, what if I change that to 30? Because all my percents are in the 30s. Oh my gosh, look what just happened. By starting my graph at 30, now it looks like C is preferred almost double to B. Look at all this space between B and C. All of a sudden, I have made it look like the gap between B and C is huge. When really, we know from looking at it, it's really not. So maybe I look at it because we're talking about percents. Maybe I want to look at 0 to 100. Right? Because percents go 0 to 100. Then the gap between them looks even smaller. But in this case, where I'm trying to show that the gap is huge, I'm going to want to pick some numbers that go right around the data that I've got. I might even go like 31. I mean, look at that. All of a sudden, this gap is getting bigger and bigger. Now this one looks double. This one looks like it's four times as preferred. So that's very misleading. It's not what we, um, it's not what the data really showed. So once you've created your graph, you've played with the colors, maybe I'm change, there I just changed that text color to blue so it matches the bars. Um, you can play with it, it's your graph, you do what you want with it. I'm gonna then click on the graph so it's all highlighted with this, um, with the boxes, and I'm gonna go Command C to copy it, or you can go up here to um, copy it under there. Um, and then I opened a Google Doc, because if you remember, the assignment here was to make an advertisement. So I started an advertisement. This is super basic. The ad isn't even, you know, the uh, most important part of the assignment. I really care about the graph. So I'm going to paste unlinked, because I, I don't really want to bring the spreadsheet into this. I want the ad to stand on its own. So I'm going to paste unlinked, and I'm going to hit paste, and now my chart is in my graph. Okay, and maybe you add some pictures. I think in the assignment it's like soda or something they're talking about, or some product. Um, you could add some pictures. You can make it look cool. But what I really, really care about is that you can show me a graph of some kind that is misleading in the data. So if you have any other questions, you want to know some more stuff you can do in, in Sheets, uh, let me know. But this should get you through the last part of that assignment. Thanks, guys.